Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Acid Base Reaction Module. This is video number 15 and we're going to be looking at amphiprotism today. But first, a small advertisement. I was incredibly touched when a number of my students uh, shared this particular meme of me that's been going around. And so this is actually a shout out to my man Nelson. Thank you very much. Uh, really do appreciate the support. I hope these videos are actually uh, contributing to your knowledge of chemistry and your understanding. Obviously, they're around, so um, they provide a resource as we get closer and closer to the HSC and you get a chance to go back and maybe review some of these things. Of course, uh, we want to keep improving all the time, so feedback is always good. Um, but it's very nice to have uh, seen just a little bit of appreciation. So thanks, guys. I do appreciate that. And to the TPHS crew, a big shout out to you guys as well. But let's get into it. Um, this is not about me. This is about amphiprotism. This is a big word. What does it mean? Well, it's like amphibian. So we know that amphibians can live on land as well as in water. These are species that according to the bronsted lowry definition, that is proton donors and proton acceptors, these are species that can do both. They can both accept a proton and donate a proton. So one of the simplest ways of uh, demonstrating amphiprotism um, is just to add water. One of the nice things about water is water itself is amphiprotic. Um, hopefully you'll you'll notice that as we uh, do a couple of these little examples um, just to give you an idea. So in this particular example, we're going to uh, demonstrate the hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate ion acting as an acid. So let's uh, say it's an acid. So if it's an acid, it's a proton donor. So it's going to lose a proton. And therefore, it's going to become CO32 minus in solution. And it will lose that proton to the water. So the water will become an H3O plus ion. So if we use our understanding of conjugates, well, we can see that this was the acid, which means that water was acting as a base. And therefore, this is now the conjugate base. It's the uh, result of the um, hydrogen carbonate ion losing its hydrogen and the hydronium ion will be the conjugate acid. Okay, so this is just an example of a bronsted lowry acid, but what about if we take exactly the same two reactants, but this time we switch them around so that the bicarbonate ion is acting as a base. So let me just write base underneath here, which means that this time the water is acting as an acid. So if it's acting as a base this time, it's actually going to accept a proton. And it's obviously going to do that from the water molecule. So if it accepts a proton, we now have H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. We know carbonic acid is a weak acid. It's the one that's involved in the equilibrium for soft drinks. And also what's left behind then this time is the hydroxide ion, which is also in the solution. So this is now the conjugate acid. And the hydroxide ion will be the conjugate base. Useful to put these pairs together because they're a useful way to help you remember um, these types of concepts. Now something else that we can look at is polyprotism. Now polyprotism sounds a bit like what it says. So protons. And poly means many, so really more than one. I mean, if for it to be poly, you'd want more than two. But sulfuric acid is a good example here because it's a species that has more than one proton, and therefore it often will form an, amphi an amphiprotic species. So the example that I've looked at here is phosphoric acid. This one here is phosphoric acid. And you can see that phosphoric acid has three protons. So in actual fact, if we were to um, combine it with water as a liquid, and we'll regard each of these as the acid sequence. So here's an acid, meaning that the water would be the base. So we would get uh, H2PO4. This is an ion with one minus charge, and that would form a 
an H3O plus ion. So that's the first one. Then there would be a second ionization, which would involve the H2PO4 minus. Again, if we put that with uh, water, with water acting as the Bronsted Lowry base, then we would have HPO42 minus aqueous and another H3O plus aqueous. And then, of course, we can do, this is also acting as an acid, then we can do a third um, ionization which, with the HPO42 minus, and it will also combine with the uh, H2O, again acting as a base, this time forming the PO43 minus ion, a phosphate ion, uh, and another hydronium ion. Now we can add these together and you'll see that if we were to add them together and to cancel out the like uh, species, then what we would end up with is um, three water molecules and three of the hydroniums as well as the uh, phosphate ion. But what you can see is with each of these, um, the corresponding species here is a conjugate base, which also is then acting as an acid here. Here's a conjugate base, but also acting as an acid here. So these are our amphiprotic species, and we can see them when we pull some of these different uh, polyprotic species apart and go through their ionization sequences. Now, there are two examples that you need to look at for each of these. Uh, you may want to pause the video at this point and see if you can work them out yourselves, or you may get a chance to do this in class um, just to have a look. The key to this, of course, is that the first thing we want to do is we want to ionize each of these. So this is sodium ion and a bicarbonate ion. Both of these obviously in solution. The important thing about these is from our NAG-SAG, this is a group one and potassium is a group one, and we know that all group one salts are soluble. So the second thing we wanna do is we wanna get the potassium ions out of here and leave our H2PO4 minus ion here as well. So once you've isolated each of these two, then what you can do is then go through the sequence that I just showed you in the previous couple of slides to show that these ions in solution can act as both um, proton donors and proton acceptors, and that's our definition of amphiprotic species. Have a look at a couple of examples and make sure that you can uh, demonstrate each of these. Simplest thing, as I said, is to add them to water and show the conjugate pairs of each of these species with the acid and its conjugate base, and then acting as a base with its conjugate acid. Thanks for watching, and thanks, Nelson.